We don't need a we don't need a majority of Americans to do this before God can move. He said, Joshua, it's already holy holy ground. Now go in there and act like it. Giants can't stay. The idolatry can't exist as long as you walk in covenant with me. If you obey me, this can't happen. So now there there is a there is a remnant. We don't have we don't have to wish there was a remnant. There is a remnant of people in this nation following God, serving God, crying out for revival, obeying him. There are enough of us. God can do this. So I was I was preaching at Chuck Pierce's conference uh, a couple years ago, I guess now, maybe th almost three years ago, 2016, shortly before the elections. And for some reason, I don't remember why or what led me there, but I was preaching on the number seven, which is a number connected to covenant. Let's, because it does, the, it means completion or whole or fully. So it's the completion of a week and then the beginning of a new week, number seven. But because of that, it, because a covenant is giving of oneself to a person completely, then seven became associated with the ritual of covenant. So they would often repeat the oath of covenant seven times. It was actually called sevening yourself. And actually the word oath, O-A-T-H, is the word seven in Hebrew. So taking an oath, sevening yourself. Sometimes they would offer seven sacrifices. It was all symbolic of covenant. And I was preaching on the number seven. And again, I can't really remember how I got there, but Chuck came up. This was about, a, I don't know, a month before the elections. And he came up at the end of my message and began to prophesy to me. And he said, the Lord says you are to go to seven places in America before the election. Seven places where a covenant with him was established in his nation and reestablished just said, prophetically in prayer and decree, repentance, prayer, decree, whatever the Lord led, you, led us to do, reestablish that covenant. Now that can't happen just because we went there. That, that's how, the, every suddenly in God is not really a suddenly. It's a process. And when it happens, it feels like a suddenly. But if there is no chronos season of plowing, interceding, praying, there is no suddenly. So we're about to have suddenlies connected with revival. But don't think for a minute that those are just happening. Those are the end result of many years, and millions of prayers that bring us to a point where he can do it. So he said, go reestablish that covenant. And he said, I, it will re reconnect America to the covenant root. And then he said, and the word of the Lord will return to the land. That doesn't mean we've never had it. That means a spirit of revelation. The word of the heavens will open and people will hear. And then he rattled off quickly in the prophecy, six, six of the seven places. I knew in my heart immediately what the seventh one was. And I thought, I've got a month. I looked at my calendar. I just, I don't know how I can pull this off, but we figured out a week that would work. He said, take a team in the prophecy. So I sent a text to about 25 friends of mine and said, this is what we're going to do. You have to pay your own way. You have to clear your calendar. This is like not get, cut, getting together and praying for seven places. This is going to seven places. 
And I said, take your time and pray about it. Let me know in the morning. <laughs> if, you're, if you want to be a part of this. Because we got a lot of planning to do and airplane tickets to get and hotel room. I mean, sometimes the Lord gives you time to prepare and sometimes he just says, change everything and do this now. And that's the problem with a lot of people in the church. They can't do that. I'm not trying to brag and say I could. I'm just saying a lot of people are so set in their ways, God can't even change the program. Anyway, total with myself, my daughter as my assistant, but also as an intercessor, 11 more people said, I'm supposed to be a part of this. So we had 13 people going to the original 13 colonies and focusing on these seven places. We went first to uh, Cape Henry, where the cross was planted, and our destiny was declared. The gospel will go forth from these shores, not only to this nation, but to all the nation, not to this land, but to all the nations of the earth. You don't have to wonder about the destiny of America. That's it right there. The gospel will go forth from these shores to all the nations of the earth. Everything else peripherally is a part of that. The wealth, the power, all that happens. This is our destiny. A voice for the gospel to the ends of the earth. So we went to Cape Henry, then we went to Jamestown. Now that was amazing. And God showed us different facets of covenant in each place, what they represented. So it was a high-level group of people, very prophetic, very seasoned intercessors. You know, any one of them could have led it. They were very, very mature. Clay was with me. He was one, one of the 13. And God would show us different things that he put into the soil, the root, here. And we would pray for two or three hours in each place. And he had told us, Earlier, I'm going to slow down with this because I'll make sure you get all this. In that 2016 year, God had given me the theme or the word mercy. One week after I received the word, which I'm coming back to, the seven places, before we went, one week after the word to go, three days before we left, I was in a meeting and a pastor was watching online on probably a live streaming. Had a vision while we were praying of he was standing and it began to rain. And he realized it wasn't raining water, it was raining coins. And eventually, in this vision, he was ankle deep in coins. And then he reached down and grabbed one of the coins. And all of them would say, God, we trust. And there'd be an eagle, but then under it would be the word in all capital letters, mercy. Then there'd be George Washington on the other side and say, God, we trust. But then it would say in capitals, all caps, mercy. You can Google mercy coins. You can buy one. He had some minted that, look, that, that are exactly what he saw in the vision. But then he held up a coin and he said in the vision, mercy is our new currency. So we took coins, just a symbolic act. Everywhere we went, we planted coins in the soil. And we said, we are asking and believing for mercy. Because you keep covenant and mercy. And so we're tapping into covenant and we're tapping into mercy. Mercy.